Hey everyone, it's me, Kirk Mastin from Mastin Labs, and on today's episode of What Makes This Photo Great, I'm going to be talking about the power of studio lighting and the different kinds of lighting patterns you can get with different equipment. And hopefully this will make your studio photography even better. So let's dive in. I've got six images from the Mass Labs community, and I'm going to show you what I think they use to light each photo by looking at different clues in the photo, in particular the catch lights in the eyes. So let's dive in. Okay, so this very first photo is by Aurel Delatang, and it was edited with Natura 1600, which is from the night and day pack that we just released. It's a beautiful uh, film optimized for low light and studio work and just beautiful, easy skin tones. And I just picked this photo from the community, community because it reminded me of another photographer that I'm very, very um, I know, passionate about, who I think is just amazing, who, and his name is Martin Scholler. And he's a celebrity photographer who uses a very similar lighting pattern. And I will get into that. But when I saw uh, Orel's work, I was like, oh my God, you like totally nailed it. Like you mastered it. So here is what makes this kind of studio lighting so powerful for photos. So if you look at this photo, it is very evenly lit, but in a very soft and beautiful way with kind of a medium amount of contrast. One of the first things I noticed about this photo that, that just kind of was, you know, the key to understanding how it was made uh, are these catch lights in the eyes. And you can see that these, these catch lights are very, very particular. They're very unusual and they're very captivating. They draw you right into the center of the photograph. And if you look very closely, you can see that there are two little strips in the eyes. So there's two little strips. I'll let that fade for a second. And that is from using softbox strip lighting, which looks um, kind of like this for the, the lay person. Uh, these are just, this is just a kind of an inexpensive example I picked up off of Amazon. It doesn't really matter what you use. Of course, higher quality uh, gear is always going to give you a little better results, more consistent. But the main concept here is you're using these really tall soft boxes to get this kind of lighting in the eyes. And it also produces a really, really soft, even lighting from both sides. So you don't really have a key light and a fill light. You've got two key fill lights, I guess, uh, coming in at an angle in front of your subject. And that light is kind of wrapping around very nicely and evenly. And it's almost like a ring light, except that it's not connected at the top and the bottom in the eyes, that, that catch light in the eyes. So Martin Schuller is this guy right here who has made some of the most powerful uh, portraits that I've ever seen, uh, very, and he prints them very, very large, but his lighting is incredibly intricate, and it goes way beyond just like two strip lights. He, he has an entire setup. If you were to go on YouTube and look, he's, he has just this really refined lighting system, and he shoots a lot of like um, medium and large format film and digital photography, and his work looks like, like this. So this is Willie Nelson, and I picked this photo because you can really see the, the strip light in his eyes. So those two strip light soft boxes in his eyes. And that kind of lighting also brings out a lot of detail in your subject. This is from like a, probably a large format digital camera, um, something that none of us can afford. Uh, but I just thought it was really cool that Aurel did this with, you know, just two strip lights and probably a more consumer level or you know, like medium pro level digital camera. It's just a very captivating portrait. It's very simple. The background is simple and the lighting, uh, the makeup, the expression, everything works. I don't know if it was kind of in the style of Martin uh, by accident or on purpose, but it was really well pulled off and I don't see it very often. So really, really good job, Aurel. Um, it looks great. Okay, moving on. Uh, yeah, we've got this guy named Rodney Williams in the community and he is just like blowing everybody away. Uh, with his incredible lighting. I, I just, he, man, this guy just has it dialed in. Um, so this, this photo came in through the group, um, blew everybody away. This is edited with uh, Natura 1600 as well from the night and day pack. And what I like about it is 
Uh, man, there's so many things I like about it. First of all, I mean, the lighting is exquisite. We've got this very, very soft lighting coming in primarily from this side. So you can tell because she's a little bit brighter here and here and here. So we know the light is coming from this side. However, there is just a little bit of wrap around, around her arm. Um, the background is nice and clean. I think that's just really super effective. If there were, you know, too many things in the background, it just wouldn't be as nice of, of a photo. And the other things that really make this work is the, just the, the general composition and the posing. I, I bring up this a lot in a lot of different videos. You know, people that know what to do with their subject's hands uh, have kind of a leg up on everyone else because hands can be really awkward and, and but they're also really beautiful and very much a part of any really good portrait. And if you just have them kind of, you know, see if I can do this, like kind of cut off at the edge of the photo, um, it's just not as pleasing. So, so to be able to put them up somewhere on your subject and make it look good, that's a big skill. And Rodney did that very, very well. She, he's, he had her pose her arm up touching her shoulder, which is not always easy to do and make it look relaxed. And then her other hand is touching her hair and it just makes this really nice profile. There's a really nice separation right here, which is important in portraiture. So you don't have too much intersection between uh, body parts. You know, there's a little bit of space there. So that, that really works. And then just the colors are amazing. I mean, look at this like flower crown and this kind of velvet top here. And even down below, these colors are just amazing. So really, really good job, Rodney. This like definitely got everyone's attention and it's just perfectly done. Now, how did you light this? I don't, I mean, I should probably have talked to you. I'm just gonna take a guess. You use a lot of Godox, Godox equipment. And from some of your other photos that I've seen, you use kind of a bare bulb uh, technique, which is like using a strobe like this, uh, shined, you know, fairly close to your subject, but it creates kind of an edgy, uh, harsher, well, not harsh, just an edgier, more colorful uh, lighting pattern. It really brings out the saturation. So I think you use something like this off to the side. I don't know if you actually used any kind of uh, reflector or V-flat or anything because we do have a really sharp drop off here at the back of her head, like her hair. And even here it's dropping off, you know, pretty quickly. So I think you've got the light kind of at a 45 close, like to her head up above shining down. Correct me if I'm wrong, Rodney, in the comments, I would love to know for sure, but that's how I think you lit this. And that bare bulb is not something that people do very often. It's very, very fashion forward. It's not meant to be like completely soft and painterly. It's to give you a little bit of pop, a little bit of contrast. So if you've never tried bare bulb photography, I suggest you look that up. It's actually very simple. It's just a bare bulb. It's a bare bulb like, like that. And it can be really effective. So good job, Rodney. I love it. All right. So now we've got two images coming up. These were a little bit harder to figure out how they were lit. You know, I'm going to do my best guess here. And hopefully it's helpful to you watching at home. Uh, this is by Grisizic, Gr Gr Grisic Kogut. Grisic is an in insanely good photographer in the Mass Labs community. I pretty much have one of his images in every single one of these episodes because he's, I don't know, he's just got a really great style. I saw this one come across and I really loved it because the, the lighting is just really beautiful and I can see that it took a lot of work. I'll tell you why. Now, I'll also tell you why I don't completely know how he did it. So looking at this image, I can see a few catch lights in her eyes, but even zooming way in, I can't tell what they are. I think maybe there is a brighter uh, softbox on our, like on her right, if we're looking at the photo on the right of her, on this side, there's a softer, a softer soft, or a bigger softbox. And then we've got some kind of fill light over here. So let me write the word fill, boop. Why do I think there's a fill light over here? Because we still have a lot of detail on the side of her face. It's very, very sculptural. There's a lot of depth in this photo, but it is slightly darker on this side. 
We've got a little bit of shadow here, a little bit of shadow there, but it's all very opened up. We don't have this kind of stronger hair light that we have. Uh, so it's a little bit stronger on this side than say over here. So I'm going to say that the key light is, is on this side. Boop, key coming in. And then we've got a fill light coming down from here. Let's see if I can write this before it disappears. And that's what we got going on. Creates a really, really nice uh, three-dimensional effect along her cheekbones to have a little bit of light right there and a little bit of light here. Are there other layers of light in here? I don't know. He might have other lights, you know, coming in from the sides. I'm not quite sure, but it is just beautifully done. Uh, the other things that really make this work is the eye line is just perfect. It's just like right, boop, right where you want it, right in kind of a center point of interest. Uh, her expression is perfect. She doesn't have a lot of white. Uh, she has no white above her eyes or too much below. So what that means is that the model squinched a little bit. And one really big tip I can give anyone watching this is that if you can see too much white underneath the pupil of someone's eye, they look surprised. They look surprised or scared or wary of the photographer. And you don't, well, unless that's the feeling you want, you don't want that in your photo. And by having your subject tilt their head down just a little bit and squinch, you get rid of that white around the eye and you get a much more powerful expression that kind of draws you in. Uh, the last thing is the color palette is absolutely fantastic. We've got this like sage green around her head and that goes really well with the warmer color of her skin and it matches her eyes. I think her eyes might actually be green. It's just beautiful. So great job. I love it. Um, so this photo, I believe, again, has some kind of light like this off to one side, off to this side over here. I think it has this light. And then on the other side, I don't know, maybe a smaller version of it and then maybe a couple uh, very small kind of snooted spotlights on, her, on the side of her face. I don't know. I'm going to have to talk to him and find out. Okay. This next one, though, is a little easier to figure out. This is by Jasmine Laverick, a, a newer photographer in the group. I, I have not seen as much of Jasmine's work, uh, but she posted all these just fantastic, like very bright, colorful studio portraits. And this one really stood out to me for several reasons. Uh, one is I just like his styling. Um, he's got he's got these little this little touch of um, orange like kind of orange eyeliner above his eye or like it's kind of like yeah like a decoration um it reminds me of like euphoria that hbo show um and maybe i'm just really old and i don't know the name for this but it just looks really cool and this orange matches the hoodie so there's a really nice repetition there um by picking these colors and and this person's skin is so pale you get this really nice like color contrast and then the piercing blue eyes just really, really draw you in at that point. So it's the only color in here that isn't kind of a warm color are the eyes of this subject. So I love that. It's really great. Okay, now onto something else that makes this great. And this ties into the theme of this episode and that is the lighting. So on this image, I could zoom in and I could see exactly what was going on. And these little, these bigger catch lights right here on the side of his eye, I know for sure are these. So big Octobank like soft lights. So let me go back you, and you can almost see the shape in the eyes. There's a second little catch light here. So what I'm thinking, here is my thesis on what's happening here. Okay, so bear with me, Octobank. I'm gonna tr do my best to draw an Octobank. Ooh, it's a big complicated shape. Okay, here's Octobank with like a little stand and it is like right up against this person's face. It's like just right out of camera. It's pretty bright, but it looks good. Okay, whoops. Now on the other side, I think what we have is down below a little tiny square softbox. And what's that? And what that is doing is providing a little bit of fill light to fill in the detail here. Otherwise, that would just go completely dark. So we've got just really nice, even illumination here on this side of the photo from the octo 
octobank. That's the key light. So the key light is the light that is the strongest of the two lights when you do a studio lighting setup. It's called the key light. And then the fill light is to fill in the shadows and you can have different ratios. So I think it's kind of, I don't know, this ratio, and it's been like a century since I was at Brooks and I learned studio lighting, but it's like, I don't know. It's like, if this was like full power over here, I think this side is at two thirds power. So it's powered down just a little bit to create, you know, a little bit of definition on that side of this person's face. Um, anyway, I love it. It's really edgy. It's very modern. It's a beautiful portrait and Jasmine, you just totally killed it on this one. It's the whole series is amazing. So yeah, fun with studio lights. Let me tell you, if you're getting into studio, uh, lighting and studio photography, you are just basically a light sculptor at that point, And there's so much you can do. So I really encourage you to experiment and just get a bunch of different tools to use. Um, speaking of which on this photo, this is by Ilya Peripsa. Uh, this is edited with Delta 3200 from the artisan black and white pack. That is like our black and white pack for people who love black and white. You can customize your look hundred percent. There's different papers that you can emulate. There's different grains for different sizes of film. There's three different films that are a broad range of looks. And I love that Ilya picked Delta 3200 for this because one of the things that makes this photo great is that really chunky growing, growing, chunky glowing grain that you have across the photo. It's just, it's just mesmerizing. I love it. Grain is not your enemy. Grain is grain has soul, has character. And I think it really makes this image work because without grain, it would just feel too slick. It would be too smooth. It'd be too plasticky. Almost the grain is just beautiful. And this particular film makes skin have a little bit of edge glow, a little bit of glow, uh, luminance on skin tone. And I love it. Okay. Now let's talk about lighting. I used to light a lot of portraits this way. So I'm just going to throw this out there and say that this was probably lit with a giant softbox with a grid on it. Okay. What is a grid? Uh, if you're into studio photography, you already know what a grid is. If you don't, a grid is an insert that you put inside of your softbox. Usually it just kind of Velcros in and it creates these little pockets. So this, uh, these little black lines actually kind of stick up a little bit. What happens is, is that the, this grid, when you pop it in your softbox, makes your softbox light really directional. There's no spillover. It doesn't just like wrap around a subject um, and then fall in, onto the background. It, it, it can be aimed very precisely with no fall off. Now, why is that important? Well, I'll show you. It's important if you want to have really hard fall off and you don't want to light up your background and that's what's happening on this photo. So we have like a very, very hard fall off right here. And that's because that gridded softbox is right here with its grid. I'll draw my beautiful grid and that grid is, is like a laser, you know, it like the edge of the light is like right here. We don't have spillover. We don't have any spillover on the sides. It is like coming in directly and only lighting up this zone. It's very focused and I can see it in her eye. I can see the little square of the softbox here. So I'm 90% sure it was with a gridded softbox. Again, I could be wrong, but it, it just really is dramatic having that kind of split lighting. Um, you know, if you go to photography school, which I actually do not recommend. Um, but if you did, and you were in a studio lighting class, actually what I recommend is you find a mentor. That is the best thing you can do. And photography school could be good. Who knows? But in photography school, they would teach you these classical lighting patterns that are supposed to be the best. There's like Rembrandt lighting, uh, butterfly lighting, whatever. Sometimes it's kind of cool to understand those rules and break them a bit. Because normally if I was in a photography class, they would say, Hey, you don't want it to just fall off into blackness right there. You want to fill that in. But in this case, I think we get this really nice kind of interesting profile here with only one eye showing. And that makes this photo powerful for me. And that's why I like it. 
Okay, moving on everybody. Okay, to our last photo. This is by a good friend of mine, Marcos Valdez. He is from Mexico. He is in the Master Labs community and I think he is now an ambassador for this um, lighting company called Geekodo. They make all kinds of great portable lights with like uh, battery pack power so you can you know, take it anywhere. They're very small and compact. They, you know, their latest series looks like this. I, I think this is what he used was this NLX uh, 280. Um, but he lit this uh, again with, he said he used continuous lighting. I'm not familiar. That this is a new company I'm just looking into. It looks like, like they've got great products. This may have a model, a modeling light. So what is a modeling light? A lot of higher end studio lighting equipment has a modeling light, which is a light that you would turn on to position your softbox or equipment uh, to the right angle to your subject. And you can act, and it's actually a continuous light. It's just a light that's on. It's like the light that's lighting me from my, uh, my softbox by my computer. It's just a continuous light to tell you what direction your softbox is. And then from there, it, you would trigger a strobe you would trigger it to fire like a normal strobe, but you would know where everything is. I think what Marcos did is that he lit this just with the modeling light. So Marcos, if you're seeing this, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is my guess. I love continuous lighting because A, I just like to see what I'm getting without it just flashing and then I see later. I'm, I don't know, that's the limit of my studio work was I did a lot of continuous lighting work. Um, but I also think it has a really nice kind of Annie Leibovitz quality to it. And that kind of comes through in this photo. Uh, again, there isn't a lot of fill light. So I'm guessing that this uh, Gikoto NLX light was just off camera over here somewhere, um, just shining out kind of above and down. And that created this kind of, whoops, created, <laughs> I'm just drawing dots everywhere, created kind of a sweep of light down like this, kind of at a high angle. And by having it be continuous lighting, you can actually see for 100% sure what's, what's happening in your photo, especially if you have like live view on or using um, a mirrorless camera, you're seeing exactly what you're gonna get. and. It just turned out great. He worked with the subjects. Uh, it's a very interesting photo. I mean, not it's not just um, that the lighting is really beautiful. I also think it's just kind of mysterious. Like this person's uh, this person's eyes are covered. It's very interesting. There's some layers here. There's a lot of things happening with hands. His eyes are being covered, and there's kind of this. Uh, I don't know, there's like two very distinct layers here because of this arm reaching around behind and covering up the face. And, and it's just kind of mysterious. And her look is very mysterious too. There's like some kind of story happening here and I don't know quite what it is, but you can feel it. There's a lot of, there's a lot of attitude. Um, it's just very interesting. And the styling is also very interesting. There are a lot of really cool details, the jewelry, uh, this like crop top, this necklace, uh, her necklace. There's just a lot going on here. And then it's got, what's interesting is that it's a very kind of modern photo, uh, but then it has a painted background, which is like very traditional, super traditional uh, thing to have in a studio. So it's kind of a mix of like modern and traditional. And that is why I think it's so cool. So anyway, anyway, what I'm trying to say here is, isn't studio lighting amazing? And if you haven't already tried exploring you know, studio lighting and what you can do, what are you waiting for? You should go out and do it. You can get so many different looks. And you know, frankly, frankly, all these are, these are just white backgrounds or pl that's not, well, that's Martin Schuller, but look, look at these backgrounds. They're all just like, there's nothing back here. If you wanna start doing really amazing studio photography. There's nothing holding you back. Just get some lights, find a blank wall, find a willing subject and make some amazing art. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. 
If you enjoyed this video, there's many, many more just like this and other things that I've taught about, about film, digital photography, editing, everything under the sun. I've been a photographer for 25 years now and I live to help people. So if you enjoyed this, go to our YouTube channel, go to the Mass and Labs YouTube channel. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that little bell button thing so you don't miss another episode. And until next time, have a great day and happy editing.